Hello everyone, welcome to Snap Take. If you missed yesterday's video, we went over these OTA changes for this video. They're not updated on the Marvel Snap Zone deck builder yet. They will be by the time you watch this. We've got a new meta deck. I'm going to take you through the new very best deck in Marvel Snap. Safety is a genius. We're going to go over my favorite immediate home for magic as our second deck for today. We've got two great decks for you, two decks that can get you to infinite. We do that every single weekday. We make sure we give you two decks every weekday, but this is such a big update. We're not just giving you two decks today. We're giving you another deck this afternoon. We're giving you another deck Saturday, and we're giving you another deck Sunday. In addition to our regular two decks a weekday, all next week we've got way too many decks with this gigantic update to get through so we're going to give you all these decks to help you do your best in marvel snap to help you reach your goals whether those goals be just improving playing cool decks hitting infinite getting infinity borders we help you get there all you got to do is sub make sure you're listening make sure you're paying attention we do high level thought high level analysis great decks and we beat the meta before others get there in addition, we do the biggest giveaway in Marvel Snap, the single biggest giveaway in all of Marvel Snap for season passes. Every single season, we top ourselves constantly. So if you're interested in a free season pass, make sure you're subbed as well. With that, let's get to the new best deck in Marvel Snap. This deck is absolutely insane. So safety as soon as the patch launches, like he, he's Australian, so he's asleep, right? Um, he messages me like an hour-ish, a couple hours after he gets up, and he's like, oh, crap, I broke the meta. I was like, oh, this deck doesn't look that special. Like, it's good, right? Like, he tweets this out. It doesn't go as viral as his stuff usually does, because, like, everyone's tweeting like a maniac for this ridiculously huge patch. Um, it doesn't go as viral as it usually does. I decide, all right, let's take this for a spin. I message him back what did you do? Um, this deck is so good. I'm not a thousand percent sure bounce even needed to be nerfed. It goes over the top of bounce with relative ease. Let's talk play patterns. You can build with Phoenix, and remember, Phoenix is a four or five now, and Ghost Spider is a one two. Those are the two cards that have changed in this deck. So you can choose. Three different play lines. All of them are wildly. If your opponent is very unlikely to be running Killmonger, there's a lot of Mr. Negative in the meta right now. There's a lot of, um, I mean, there's a lot of jank in the meta right now as people try and figure it out. There's a lot of Thanos that's not running Killmonger, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. If your opponent is not running Killmonger, you can build an absolutely insane Human Torch. To do this, you just play Human Torch. You Carnage or Venom it. Um, at that point, you can um, Phoenix Force it. You don't even need to Shuri, to be perfectly honest, for Human Torch. You Phoenix Force it. You drag it around a couple times. You don't play anything else. And then when it's like 40, 50 power, you drop a Taskmaster. And then you have like 40 power in two lanes. And you just sort of shrug and move on with your life. Um, it doesn't have to be Taskmaster. You can just Shuri Red Skull the last two turns. Um, if you Phoenixed on turn four and you move it once... You can play um, a Ghost Spider, for example, to pull that Human Torch for an extra move and then play Shuri. Then you can drop Red Skull on that Shuri and move the Torch again for just absolutely bonkers walls to the wall, uh, balls to the wall power. There's lots of ways to do this that's com that are completely insane. There's also obviously the Shuri before Phoenix play also works just fine. Um, Torch is the only way that so that doesn't really work with the Zabu combo because you would need to go like Torch, Zabu, Shuri, Force, and there's no extra mana to kill the Torch there. So unless your opponent does it for you by foolishly playing Killmonger, that's a bad play. Um, armor is here to protect wherever Human Torch or wherever Red Skull ends up. Well, you just decide to drop it there. That's just one lane you don't have to worry about. You've won that lane unless they... Uh, and I guess unless they Shadow King. Shadow King is your one concern, but Shadow King, it will be cycling down in the meta for a while. I'm going to argue I think he should come back. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Okay. The other play line is your multiple manning. 
you multiple man destroy multiple man at that point again you're choosing shuri phoenix force or just phoenix force the beauty of just phoenix force is the phoenix force is now five multiple man is two that equals eight you have eight power to drag around on turn four so that means you get the two free moves um it's generally easy on turn three to destroy multiple men. Like you, if you're doing carnage, you can carnage multiple men, then play Iron Fist. Then the next turn, play Phoenix Force and immediately get it to resolve, make a multiple men and move. So you get two multiple men right off the bat. You can also at that point, um, like then the next play would be like um, on turn five would be Ghost Spider into Shuri, for example. And now you're just dragging eight, cost, eight power cards all over the freaking board. Um, it's very easy to just fill every lane um, in this manner. It's super duper strong. Um, there is some argument for Heimdall over America Chavez because of this in the deck. I don't like it because I like to like guarantee my super my super power plays. I want to see Phoenix. I want to see Torture Bolt. But like you're not always going to, right? Like once in a while you get that bad draw. And in this deck, the bad draw is fundamentally i play a lot of cards gain a lot of power early and if i don't have phoenix i venom and taskmaster and then i play red skull that's pretty big too right like you've got a four power uh four to eight power torch you've got a four power venom you've got um the two power ghost spider floating around you've got just a couple multiple men or something you venom it you taskmaster it that's like 12 power in two places you drop a red skull have a great time you can also just go classic uh my least favorite play with the deck because I, uh, long time viewers will know I hate Red Skull. Uh, not a big fan of fictional fun Nazi time, but whatever. It's in the best deck again. So you go Shuri, Red Skull, and then you copy with Taskmaster. Spoiler, that still works. The whole 28 power in two lanes thing is pretty freaking strong. Are you giving up something with Red Skulls plus two to opponent cards? But everyone's not going wide. And if you play that in an intelligent location, you'll very often just win the game any fucking way. If you're worried about, by the way, this is so silly, but when you're worried about a Shang-Chi and you can, like, you have enough power in another location, remember Ghost Spider, if you have priority, will pull your card right out of the way. I found myself a couple of times, like, being like, oh, I need to Ghost Spider that 28 power Red Skull. They're going to drop a Shang there like crazy. So I like go spider that to a lane that I would otherwise be losing. And then I last turn, I just drop American. I'm like, all right, nine somewhere else wins that spot. And then 28 in one place win. Oh, well, 30 because go spider is there too. Wins another spot. Have a great day. This deck is consistent. This deck is strong. It puts out power like you wouldn't believe in either like immediately or at worst in a couple weeks someone like cam best or tlsg is going to realize this deck exists and tell rune about it and this is the new meta welcome to the new meta take advantage of it before everyone notices this deck is sick play it this deck is awesome but in a different way magic is now a three two i've been playing a version of this deck forever uh kitty is now a one two and hit monkey is now a three those are the changes. I've been playing a version of this deck forever. Um, I built it with a member of our Discord. His name is Turbo. Hey, Turbo. Hope you're watching, bud. Um, the idea is fairly self-evident. You have all the control pieces. pieces. Um, it was always running magic. The idea was you can go magic into Sarah to get around wave. You can still do that, by the way. But this one has a couple of extra tricks, right? First of all... Um, Trick number one that is brand new is I added Scarlet Witch into the deck. Scarlet Witch, instead of just um, Jeff in the deck, I believe, or, you know, general two cost X, Y, or Z, or sometimes that was Nova. So, like, there were lots of things to do there, right? Um, if, if you make a, a um, excuse me, if you early on make a, why can't I think of the name of, uh, limbo. There we go. Magic's location. If you make a limbo, right, your opponent is not going to be assuming that you're going to Scarlet Witches. Witch it. Our friend, the Savage Yeti, came up with this game plan ages ago, but it's always been very hard to pull off because of the expense of magic. Now, it's much, much easier to do. You can do something like um, magic on turn four, Sarah on turn five, and then play... Um, like a hit monkey, a Mysterio, a Scarlet Witch, and win that last turn 
turning off Limbo and closing out the game as a way to steal extra cubes. Now, there's everything else should be self-explanatory, right? Kitty still synergizes just fine with Angela and Bishop. Is she a strong? No. Hit Monkey still works really well on that now seventh turn, or works just as well as always if behind Invisible Woman. Killmonger and Shang Chi still work behind Invisible Woman. The one new card here I'm not sold on is Shadow King. Um, it's Shadow King has always been rogue in this deck, and right now what everyone is playing are Mr. Negative Living Tribunal decks, and having Rogue or Enchantress, if you prefer, for that matchup is stellar. It's like game-winning, back-breaking. I think, relatively soon, people are going to realize this is the best deck. Because like giving this an extra turn with magic when you've got eight power multiple men to drag around is silly, right? Like, it's just more time to see, like, Shuri, Red Skull, and other nonsense. You put out too much power. So when you come play this, I think you're going to need a Shadow King that can um, lock down those multiple, the first of those multiple men as soon as possible because um, Shadow King on a Phoenix Forced card will make it back to the original card's power. Not Phoenix Forces 5, but um, Human Torches 2 or Multiple Man's 3, which is so much more manageable ridiculous again that might be better as enchantress depending on how the meta shakes out that's the only card in this deck i really have questions about this deck has always 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 been an absolute killer and conquest mode i urge you to keep playing it and check that out and that's it for today please hit that sub button like comment we appreciate your support we'll be back later today i'm going to be showing you my favorite way to play living tribunal it's another safety deck it's brilliant Get ready for it. See you this afternoon for another snap take, then see you tomorrow for another snap take, the next day, the next day, where we've got at least like 12 straight days of snap take for you. Don't miss out. Hit that sub button. Peace, everybody.